The IMF is warning of a New Zealand housing crash. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and let's have a look at this article sent to me by a viewer about an IMF warning that an unsustainable rise in New Zealand housing could trigger a correction. Well, they've risen a significant amount over there. It's just going crazy. We've talked about this in several other videos. You know, mortgage arrears surged by 15% a couple, two months ago. New Zealand clamping down on property investors. And then there's a few here about the Aussie market as well. I feel sorry for our friends over in NZ, guys. They're, they're, it's going crazy over there. Some of the growth that they're getting in property is just, it seems insane how fast it's happening. It's bloody hard trying to get into the market anywhere in the Commonwealth, really. It really is. It's a nightmare. So... The IMF warns unsustainable rise in New Zealand house prices could trigger a correction. So is that them saying that they've potentially got a bubble in New Zealand? What do you reckon, guys? Let, let us know. All the Kiwis, you know, I have a shot of coffee. Kiwis in the comments, let us know. So New Zealand's unsustainable house price rise could trigger a pronounced correction. The IMF warned in, a, in its staff report on Friday. The country's success in managing COVID-19, well, this is the, I mean, you're on the edge of the world, guys. No offense to Kiwis, but you're, just, you're even more isolated than we are here in Australia, and we're in the middle of nowhere, okay? We're really on the edge of the world. Uh, <laughs> has enabled its economy to recover faster than other countries, but a slew of monetary and fiscal stimulus measures has supercharged property market values. This is the thing. They're juicing it up. Where's, where's the money going? Yeah, the candle on effect. Everyone, change in monet uh, relative monetary supply is resulting in a, you know, a change in relative prices. Where's it going in New Zealand? Property. Now, I I'm Australian, everyone. I live in Australia. I occasionally watch Australian TV. I made the mistake of watching some ABC News actually the other night. I put it on for ABC iView. And I'm, I'm listening to these articles and I'm thinking, why, why are they only presenting one side of the story? Where's the alternative side? It's been that long since I've watched the news. But here in Australia, we are obsessed with property to the point where every other bloody reality TV show is the block or this or that. I'm just waiting for them to combine Bachelor with Iron Chef and you've got to make a house. I mean, that, that might actually be... And then Survivor too. You know, that might actually be, be entertaining. I should pitch that. But anyway, anyway, so... I'm not familiar if Kiwis are obsessed, are as obsessed with housing as we are here in Australia. Although I suspect, and I would not be shocked if they are. Used to be a time where you could work here in Australia, get decent income, or even any income, and you get a 20% kick for the exchange rate and go back to NZ and get a house for a decent value. But now they've, they've just crept up to insane amounts. The IMF's warning comes as median prices for residential property across New Zealand rose by a record 22.8% in February. Not in a year, in February, in one month. This is housing. This is not crypto, okay? Bloody hell. According to latest statistics from the Real Estate Institute of New Zealand released on Thursday, 22.8%. How's the wage growth over there, Kiwis? Median house prices in its biggest city, Auckland, increased by a record 24.3% to 1.1 million New Zealand dollars, 794,000 US. The IMF said financial stability concerns have been heightened by speculative demand for housing, which along with historically low interest rates and structural housing supply shortages are amplifying the house price surge. Unsustainable. House prices relative to income, a tightening of credit standards, or a sharp rise in mortgage rates could trigger an eventual pronounced correction, the IMF staff report said. A comprehensive policy response is needed, including measures to unlock supply and dampen speculative demand, the report says. I mean, New Zealand, the population isn't that big. It's a, it's a decent-sized country. Surely they need to free up some land to get more housing over there. And I honestly, I quite, I refer to the New Zealand um, design and documentation guidelines for waterproofing because they're much more onerous than here in Australia because, well, you know, it's a very wet country. 
Critics have slammed the government and central bank, saying its fiscal and monetary stimulus have indirectly fired up the property market by letting investors pick up more investment properties while cutting off first home buyers. This is, this is the problem. Future generations are going to bear the burden for all of this monetary sim stimulus that's flooding the market. And they're essentially, they're getting weighed with this, this burden and they're getting priced out of the market. This really sucks, everyone. This is why you want people advocating for a free market where there's less intervention. But it's also why it won't happen so long as our current politicians have their power because they want to be the hero. They want the magic fiat money machine so they can just secretly tax you with inflation and still give you everything you want. By the time the masses figure it out, it's going to be too late. The growing political pressure prompted the government last month to ask the Reserve Bank of New Zealand to consider the impact on housing while formulating monetary policy decisions, although most economists don't expect any such move to have a meaningful impact on house prices. This is the thing. Most reserve banks aren't worried about house prices. At least they're considering it. They'll think about it. They'll think about it. I hate to be a first-time home buyer in NZ. The, uh, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand brought back mortgage lending curbs this month, also lifting some liquidity facilities it had put in place. The government is also expected to reveal other measures to temper the housing market later this month. I mean, they're not going to allow the market to correct. They'll do whatever they can. You know, it's a vote winner. It's a vote winner. The IMF said in its report that fiscal and monetary support should not be withdrawn prematurely as uncertainties remain. I mean, this is NZ, everyone. They're, the impact of the pandemic on their economy is mainly a result of government intervention. So... Let's have a look at the key points. New Zealand's unsustainable house price rises could trigger a pronounced correction, the IMF warned in its staff report on Friday. The country's success in managing COVID-19 has enabled a faster economic recovery than other countries, but a slew of monetary and fiscal stimulus measures has supercharged property market values. The IMF warning comes as median prices for residential property across, across New Zealand rose by 22.8% in February in one month. How can you keep up? There's no way your wages are going to go up 22.8% in one month. This is, imp it's, it's crazy. It is just crazy. You know what the government should do? They should just make everyone who isn't a first home buyer shouldn't pay any tax until you get a house. <laughs> oh, I know that's, I know that's ludicrous, but you should, oh, it, it, this is just a mess. Future generations are going to pay the price for this. And you're, you're essentially funding your inability to get into the housing market, inability to have stability. Having a stable life with a home where you can raise a family, where you can just relax and have some certainty and some security is now becoming a luxury. That's the saddest thing about all of this. Maybe it was just a little flash in the pan of human history, guys. Anyway, let me know your take on this. Kiwis, how are you coping? Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you to the viewer that sent me this article. Please keep them coming in. It really helps. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care. Have a great day. I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.